All right, so what I'm gonna be showcasing here is our February release features. Now we have received some feedback on this already, which is fantastic. And we are gonna implement one major change in the next week or so, which I'll showcase uh, as part of a little UI mock-up towards the end of this. But first and foremost, the thing that you're gonna realize is that we do have a folder structure here on the left that was used, used to be just for me the media uh, library, but is now contained for playlists and schedules as well. So this is a shared folder structure that can now be used across all three of these. Um, the point of confusion that we've had with a few customers as well is now that these three buttons are on the left over here, which used to navigate to a separate section, now that these are here as well as up here, uh, it gets a little bit confusing when clicking on a playlist, cold playlist, as to why there's nothing contained within here. So this two-step process is something that we will be getting rid of uh, in the next week, and it'll just instead showcase everything within a folder. But as it stands right now, if you are using this, um, just know that you can create a folder that now contains uh, any combination of media, playlists, and schedules. And you can use this toggle at the top over here to swap between all three of these. Um, this, when you click on playlists, for example, is navigating to the playlists over here and the schedules, which is navigating over here, which we understand is a bit of a redundancy, which is why we're gonna be changing it next week or so. But one of the things that you can do is now using this system is you can actually just keep it as a single folder and now have everything contained within it. So that's one way that you can do it. You could create a default folder, put all your media in here, chuck all your playlists in this next little section and the schedules, and now they're all kind of contained within the same, uh, the same folder. This would essentially replicate what we had before in terms of the media playlists and schedules. So you could keep your platform exactly the same as you've had it in the past. Um, when you do log in, you'll probably notice that you've got these two new folders under here, one called All Playlists and one called All Schedules. These are just something that we've created generically just because this is uh, th there was no folder for playlists and schedules previously and it's just something that we need to put them into. So now you'll have this folder called All Playlists which will contain every playlist you had previously on your account. When it comes to setting up these folders, there's a couple of different ways that you could do it. Uh, you could create it as one single folder, for example, or under these subfolders, you could create a single folder for each of the three different elements. So content, for example, could just be your media. Playlists, again, could just be your playlists and schedules. That's one way you could do it. Or the other way, which is kind of the way that we're moving towards now, is based on some feedback, is essentially uh, customers want to contain a single subset of content within a folder, for example. So let's say you were doing a February 22 promotion, you want to be able to put all of the media re relevant to that promotion in there, as well as contain any of the playlists, as well as any of the schedules. So now you could create that for a screen one, for example, and then you've got your media playlists and schedules as well, or under your menu boards, for example, media playlists and, and schedules. So now it just keeps it a little bit more easily navigable because you could say this is all relevant to this and now I can just go between the three of these. So keep that in mind when creating your folder structures, that that is uh, one of the major benefits of having the three combined um, types within there. Uh, another feature as part of this new folder structure is we've got the ability to now move folders. So instead of you having to delete it and, and create a subfolder, you can just click and drag and that will reorder uh, the, the folder. So you could say move that up to the top, for example, or likewise, we could just put that under a subfolder as well. So I could move that folder into this subfolder now. So it's just a nice little quality of life to organize any of your uh, folders as you uh, maybe remove this uh, promo, you could put this into an old folder, for example. So keep that in mind when you're using the new folder structure. Uh, I'll quickly show you one of the changes that we are gonna be making. So hopefully you guys can see this. So this will be the new UI interface. This is something that we've wanted to do for quite a while, but we are gonna push the button on it based on the feedback that we've had. As you saw before, the uh, media playlist and schedule section kind of are a little bit redundant now that all that content is uh, contained within a single folder. So on the left, we'll be giving you guys the option to opt in to converting that into a single manage button or you could just leave it as this, the, the current setup and changing screens to deploy. So it's just a bit of a terminology change for customers that have uh, screens and media players. So under the manage section, you'll now visually see by default all of the different uh, elements uh, without having to swap between the three. So you'll have your media, you'll have all your playlists and schedules visible as you click on that. So now as you navigate through each of your folders, you'll just see everything within that. We will be adding a filter at the top that allows you to say it will only show me media, only show me playlists and only show you uh, schedules and you can toggle all three of these combinations on if you want to. With that change, we'll also be changing the way that the add button works. So now it's contained within a single dropdown. So you'll have media, images, uh, video websites, templates and zones, as well as your create of playlists and schedules. So just cleaning it up a little bit and hopefully avoiding a lot of the confusion that we're having at the moment. 
So hopefully this is done by at some point next week, but we'll again let you guys know when that comes out. And if you do have any feedback on this, that would be great at the end as well. Okay, moving back on. So under the playlist section, we have added under the default playlist option up here, uh, a few, a, a single uh, addition. So this media fit settings had been previously implemented late last year. So this allows you to set the default settings for any content that is added into a playlist. But the new one here is this media duration. So previously you had to specify it in seconds, but we have updated the convention to allow hours, minutes and seconds. So in case you didn't just want to have three seconds, for example, you could make that 10 minutes, or if you for some reason wanted to make it one hour and 10 minutes, you could do that as well. So it's just a nice cleaning of the UI, but we've had a lot of customers asking, well, I don't want the default to uh, three seconds. I want it to be 10, for example. So you can make that change in there, press save, and then any of your content will be updated. So next under the playlist section, if I just go into any of these playlists, um, We've cleaned up this UI at the top. So there used to be a heap of buttons depending on your account level. Uh, we used to have a lot of different things up here, but for the most part, we uh, have accumulated both the media and the playlist under a single dropdown, as well as anybody who is testing our template section, which will be uh, shortly converted into our designer studio. The overlay button used to be two buttons, but now it's a single button. So clicking on the overlay allows you to choose the overlay from the account that you've created in our template designer. Uh, assign it, set it, and remove it. So now it'll sit up there nice and neat. But if we add in some new content, I'll show you some of the different things that we've added in. So same content modal as before. So I just add in these uh, media items. The first update is we've added in a resolution column. So one of the biggest issues a lot of our customers have had is the fact that if you put an image or a video that's larger than the resolution of your screen, sometimes the players have a lot of difficulty in uh, rendering that content. So sometimes we've had 8,000 by 8,000 pixel images and for some reason they come to us and say, hey, it's not working on the screen. So to clear that up, we've added this resolution column so we can help by quickly checking or we can uh, just provide that additional information to say, well, that's actually outside the boundaries of your content, uh, your screen's capability. So maybe either re-render it, uh, shrink it down a little bit or just uh, remove it from the playlist and, and see if that helps. So resolution column is quite handy. Uh, next, the duration column has been updated again for that, uh, that uh, naming convention or the, the date convention in there. But we've added in this multi-tick option now. So again, another really big feature is how do I uh, mass update the duration column? Well, by ticking these buttons, you can now set the, the duration you want. So say you wanted that as 15 seconds, hit the tick button. Now it'll update all those items to be 15 seconds. So really nice quality of life if you have not set your default uh, duration previously, or you just want to update a few at a time. And you also do have this fit fill stretch option to override as well, which was a release we did uh, late last year. Uh, for our advanced and pro license holders, we have the content level scheduling change. So content level scheduling used to just be on the single media item, but now under content level scheduling, we have the ability to create a schedule as per normal. Let's just say we want it only to play on Monday, for example, but now we've got this option to apply to select it. So what this means is we can do is because we've ticked these four items back here, we can apply it to all of them at the same time, or we could just apply it to the single one. So if I just press apply there, it'll do what it has previously done, which is create that schedule on that first item because that's the one that I clicked on. But if I want to apply it to all four, I could re-click on this content level scheduling, confirm that this is what I want the schedule to be, press apply to selected, and now it's applied all of that to the same, uh, the same schedule to all four of those items. So again, just a nice quality of life feature if you want to apply to uh, multiple within the same playlist. Um, for our advanced and pro license holders as well, a nice little quality of life we've added in is a replace feature. So let's say you've set up quite a robust schedule in here and it's gone through and done all that. Um, you, you could now, instead of deleting this item, adding a new one in, copying the content schedule, you could just hit the replace button. It'll bring up this modal that says, okay, find the piece of content that you want or upload a new piece. So this is the same content uploader that we've got in our media section. So I could go through and say, okay, I want this to be this example piece of content, replace. It's now swap that file out whilst maintaining the content level schedule, the fit and the duration. So just a little feature that just should streamline uh, the, the updating and changing of content. This is also really good for iterative changes. So if this is your promo, you can always do that and just replace your promo every single month. Um, another feature we've added is a little bit more clarity under this save and publish section. So save and publish just used to say publish, which is a little bit of a source of confusion for customers because they said, well, I don't want to publish it. I just want to save it. So save and publish now just clears up a little bit of that terminology. We've added a little bit of flavor text up here just to give a bit more context about what's happening. 
um, and change save and publish down here. If you don't have this assigned to any screens, it will just say save. So just another quality of life to confirm that it isn't publishing it anywhere. But you may have noticed under this modal here, if I add in a couple of screens on the account, we've got this nice little feature here to show you not just the screen name, but also the current online status. <clears throat> So one of the biggest support calls we have is, well, I've created this playlist or I've updated my playlist, I've hit publish, it says it's done, but it hasn't changed on my screen. 9.9 .9 times out of 10, that's because the screen is offline, it's not connecting to our portal for various reasons, mostly of which is the internet connection has disconnected or the screen itself has turned off. So putting this little modal in here will tell you exactly what's happening with the screens you want to publish to. So offline for three hours, you know that this isn't actually gonna update on the screen. We've got our little get support button in here, which will take them to our generic kind of support website to help them hopefully get it back online. But it um, also just give them that prompt. Um, over here as well, we've got the current playlist that you're going to be overriding. So if you don't necessarily want to change the playlist, it's just another quality of life to say, well, okay, I'm changing my test playlist to this one and this one and this one. So you know that it's going to override it. If it is on the current playlist, it will tell you it's on the current playlist. So you know that that's all good. Likewise, under the screen group, it'll tell you uh, just an indicator here that two of the screens within this group are offline. So that's for our advanced and pro license holders there. Finally, if we do press publish here uh, and these screens are offline, we have a secondary prompt that says, okay, you've tried to publish to these screens, but four of them are currently offline. So just know, and it'll tell you a little bit of information that you can still publish the content and it will try and download it when it comes back online. However, it won't be able to receive that new content. So just a secondary prompt, just in case for some reason they miss it, hit save and publish. And now that is content will be sent as soon as those devices come back online. So hopefully these features within here are just a little bit of a quality of life and, and help your customers or yourselves out just understanding what's going on while you're saving your playlists and publishing it to the screens. Uh, likewise, under the schedules, if I find a uh, schedule in here, we've done that same change to that modal at the top over here. So save and publish has been updated to show save and publish as well as the same uh, online status as well as the uh, current playlist. So overriding this playlist with this schedule will also happen if you do it this way. Uh, finally, under the screen section over here, we've made a couple of changes. Uh, first and foremost is expiry and remaining columns. So these two columns just let your customers or yourselves know how long you've got remaining on your license. So this is really handy for renewals because at the moment that wasn't currently in there and we have a lot of questions around, well, I didn't know that my uh, screen was going to be expiring at any point. You do get sent uh, email notifications when that expiry is happening. However, if you haven't been set as the uh, contact user down here, then it's probably not gonna be sent to you. So that's one of the things, uh, limitations at the moment. So just another visual prompt when you're checking out your screens in here, how long these licenses, are, or when these licenses are due to expire, as well as how much time is remaining. Uh, finally, under the add screen section, if I just uh, delete this screen, for example, um, under the add screen section, we've just added a little bit of additional information. So right here, this used to say just identity code, uh, wasn't very uh, informative, especially for customers trying to figure out what's going on with how many licenses they've got. Um, so when you're adding in a, a new screen now, it'll say, first of all, you need a license on your account. If you don't have a screen, you can access our Fusion web player over here. So if you're doing a trial or you're testing or you wanna see something, um, you can click it on here, but it will just show you all of the licenses that are relevant to you. As you add in that identity code, it now becomes that same process of adding in a screen name. So demo screen, for example, or you can select the existing license. And it is good to note that I uh, deleted this screen from the account, which has freed up that license. So we added a note in there. If you want to delete a screen, it will free up that license, but just note you better uh, keep it keep track of that identity code if you want to add in the same screen, if you're not near it. And adding in the time zone as well is just helpful for any of the screen online graphs. Good, so that took about 10 minutes, there we go, which is good to go through all of that. Let's just see if there's any questions specifically. Um, fusion update, 20 minutes, simple. Okay, no questions. If anybody does have any specific questions or wants me to show them anything in a bit more detail, now is a really good time to do that. Um, feel free to unmute if you want to start yelling um, or just type it into chat. Fantastic, okay. Well, if you do have any questions, uh, by all means, you can email us through or even under your, your name down here, we have this feedback button. 
like we said uh, in, in the release, essentially all of the development that we do is based on real world feedback. So if there's something that you find annoying, something that you find uh, could be improved or something you think is completely missing, please just come in here, fill this out, we'll receive this and then we can pretty much just build that into our backlog. If it's something that we can do quickly, typically our turnaround time can be, I don't know, a couple of days to maybe a week. Um, some bigger functionality, obviously we have to kind of plan in. Um, any feedback here? Oh. James says a question there from uh, Nicole from Sedexa. Okay. Uh, we have multiple users. Uh, is there a way to sign a default folder for some users? Um, okay. So my media folder is huge and it crashes the page. Interesting. I will have to have a look at how many media items you have in your account. Um, have you not set up multiple folders or is it happening across uh, multiple? Maybe it's one we take offline, James and Nicole yeah. and I have been chatting offline about this as well about their um, about their account. So um, yeah, that's fine. We we yeah. do have just um, an additional thing I can show you quickly. We do have a uh, uh, demo. We do have a uh, permission system. So this is under the advanced licenses in here. So permission groups, for example. So you could set up a group that had. Um, or set up a user, for example, that only had access to specific media folders. So let's have a chat about this a little bit offline and figure out how we can make that work for you. But otherwise, yeah, we, if it's crashing based on how many items you have in your media folder, that's something we should probably look at in the back end. Any other questions? We're at the 20 minute mark. So if anybody feel, uh, wants to, to duck off, feel free. If anybody has any other questions, Feel free to shoot them through. As always, please let us know any feedback that you have. We can send you a recording of this so you've got a copy. Um, otherwise, there is a shorter video in the uh, email out that we did uh, a couple of days ago. So you can always refer back to that. Great. Okay, no other well questions. You've got the guru on the line, you guys. You should you should be hammering him with questions. I would. No questions <laughs> is good as well. I mean, that, that's that's pretty helpful. Look, yeah, as always, thank you so much for taking the time out. We know how hard it is to, to find time for these things. 20 minutes seems like a good time frame. Um, as always, we'll be doing more of these, uh, hopefully in the next couple of weeks and months as we have new features coming out. So please uh, feel free to give us any feedback. Thank you. I'll stay on for a